it's your girl Jay Wynette and I'm here today because I'm about to make wine from scratch. I'm in the backyard of my family and right here is what you call a scuppernon tree. It's really pronounced probably like scuppernon. Scuppernon. But you know we look country so we like scuppernon, you know what I'm saying? So anyway, so we're gonna make some wine. Today is the first part of this probably two part video because it's gonna take a long time for the wine to be made. Today is the first part and we're gonna be doing the picking of the scuppernons, okay? So I have my lovely assistant here. Come on, mom, get in the camera. <laughs> Not the... <laughs> so we're gonna be picking the scuppernons today and my lovely brother is on videography today. And yeah, so ready to get to it? Yes. Let's do it. The first thing you wanna make sure you do, you got something to collect your grapes in. Um, Scuppernons are in the grape family. That is not grape. So we'll get into more of that when we're actually doing the making of it. And I'll tell you a little bit more about that. However, these are scuppernon grapes, okay? And so this is our vine. Come a little closer for me, Christmas. And right here, this is kind of how the bunches are. Oops, dropped one. However, you don't want the green ones, okay? The green ones are not ready yet. You kind of want these purple looking ones, all right? And you're just going to pop it in your basket now the bulk of the good purple ones the riper ones they're going to be on the ends of the tree here okay but you have to be careful when and if you do decide to plant a scuppernine vine it's almost the time it almost has to be perfect to pick them okay they kind of harvest right around the end of late august beginning of september but it's like you gotta catch in that right window because if you come in here about the second week of September, your whole tree gonna be dead, pretty much, okay? Or, like, come right here, Christmas. Get right in here. You see right here? Perfect. Where is it? This is what you want. These are the, the colors of the grapes that you want, okay? All right, so he's gonna take you around the other side and, and show you our mom and how she's doing coming with her picking and I'm gonna get some more picking done, all right? Here's Candace. Hi. This is Christmas's wife and our, <laughs> uh, our other daughter. She's now, this is her first time picking scuppernod. It is, I'm excited. Yes, you're excited, okay, let's get it going. So you just wanna lift in, can't be scared of nothing out here. <laughs> and fine, see here? And you just pull those off and drop them in your bucket. And that's pretty much it. You try to get the ones that's more brown to purple. That you saw fall and that are purple okay the ones is already kind of down there you don't want to pick those up you don't know what could have gotten to them or animals whatever the case may be so they're not good and not going to be good to use call them casualties loose variables whatever but don't worry about them you're going to have plenty enough on the tree okay all right everybody so we have pretty much done all of our picking okay that we're going to do should be enough to make um a good enough batch for the wine now what you don't want to do is make a rookie mistake like i did no i'm not a rookie but don't make a rookie mistake and number one this is not the proper way to be out here in okay my arms are exposed my ankles are exposed and i had on uh like chacos so big mistake right there my feet are a up right now from ants so if you you know out here picking anything i would make sure that you kind of Put you some ant stuff down prior to come make a day maybe a day or two so they can die out before you come out here and pick try to pick in the afternoon when it's a little cool overcast because we still out here sweating it's hot um but that's pretty much it right now guys for the picking hello everybody i'm back so we just finished picking all of our scuppernines here and we're going to now start the making process for our wine so first things first what you want to do I've already took the liberty of pre-washing them, but you want to make sure you wash and clean your scuppernines, okay? 
they've been out there in the elements and dirt whatever have you so you don't want to just number one definitely don't want to just eat them right away and number two you definitely want to make sure you wash them before you try to make it to wine while dirt might add a little flavor that's not the flavor that we're going for okay next you want to take get you some type of they, a big bowl or a pan or something i got a different kind of pan from earlier make sure i wash it out i have a potato masher but also it can be used to squish you know the grapes something that you can make sure you're squishing the grapes get everything flat with um this is my first time making the wine so we're going to just try it out and see if i like it i might just end up using my hands okay um next you make sure you get you a large sustainable container um i got this kind of durable bucket make sure i clean it out um brand new bucket and you they recommend using a crock i don't personally have a crock it's like a container for fermenting but this works just just as fine okay and lastly you're going to make sure you have this cheese cloth this is very important for the fermentation process so this is like you know all the things you need right now for the first kind of step okay so once we got our grapes washed take our grapes that we have here take a few of them out and start our mashing process okay i'm gonna say i probably have about three or four gallons here in the cooler so i'm just gonna take this for right now um and smash this up it's kind of like that's halfway full and just kind of start my smashing process okay and just start there so you don't want to just kind of do too hard just enough to kind of get the juices out and start the soaking process that we'll need okay but one thing you want to make sure you guarantee is that you have every grape is burst open okay you don't want to leave any grapes unopened because they won't be able to come out that way okay so you just want to make sure you have the grapes open and coming out now, some of your greener grapes, like these, you might have to, you know, kind of hand open yourself. And I know I said earlier, make sure that you have the um, the more brown grapes. But in your picking process, you know, they come off the vine. Go ahead and put the grapes in there. Okay. We just recommend the um, more brown or purple grapes because... They're going to be the juicier ones, okay? And if you've never seen a scuppered iron before, or really know what it looks like. So this right here is the actual grape. And it's a lot thicker skin than a usual grape. You don't, I guess you could eat the skin, but most people really don't. So you just kind of burst them open. Um, I typically put it in my mouth and, and chew it open. But um, you bust it open. And you kind of just squeeze the seeds coming out but you squeeze the the middle part out pull it out and well <laughs> that's that's what you eat you know so it's part of the grape grape inside it's very thick so it's like you could eat it but be chewing for a minute it's almost like gum so you just continue to mash I've already got some of this mashed here, or well, most of it mashed. And as you can kind of see, some of the liquid has already come out of it. It'll be a lot more liquid coming out of it from the fermentation process, but most of the liquid is kind of already smashed out. And so once you've gotten your grapes pretty smashed and kind of flattened, what you're gonna do is you're gonna transport it to your fermentation bucket, okay? So, just so I don't make a mess, I'm using this big ladle spoon and just kind of scooping everything up. You want to scoop the whole, the juice, and even the seeds all into it, okay? Because the seeds will be strained out in a later process, okay? But right now, you want to make sure you have kind of everything inside the bucket, okay? So transport everything over and you're going to repeat this step as many times as needed until you've crushed all of your grapes okay don't be afraid to get your hands wet my mama always say you can't be trying to cook in the kitchen if you ain't if you're scared to get your hands dirty okay you can always wash them but can't be scared to 
get your hands wet. Make sure you wash your hands first before, <laughs> before making, but uh, just make sure you and just kind of just pour the rest of the juice in there. Scrub everything out and scoop you some more grapes out. All right, everybody, so I have mashed my last batch of the grapes and I'm just gonna do the same thing I did with before and just kind of scoop them out. Now, I can say the potato masher, it works, but I think um, a better one would be like a big spoon like this and kind of smush and mash. But the best option I had was honestly smashing with my hands and just kind of going in like this and, you know, really smashing it with my hands. Using my hands gave me the, the best option to get as much juice out as possible, okay? So again, just kind of take your big spoon Scrape your holes and everything up and put it in your bucket. And then like right here, I see I have a grip that's unburst. So you just wanna make sure you open it up and leave, have everything kind of open. So make sure, that's another good thing of using your hands, making sure you're feeling around in your pan or your, your bowl. You can use a pan, you can use a bowl. There's something big enough where you can mash down inside of but making sure that every grape is open because how can the grape give you juice if it's not open, okay? So I'm just kind of stir in here a little bit, kind of get everything all mixed up a little, you know, stir inside the pot a little bit, the bucket, I guess, whatever, whatever you're using. <laughs> kind of stir inside of it. Make sure you really get in there, get everything kind of mixed around. Make sure you have everything kind of even side of the pot okay kind of flat and what you're gonna do from there you're gonna take you some water and you're just gonna pour kind of pour into the pour into the um what is this pour into your fermentation bucket until a good amount of your holes are floating okay i'm gonna add a little bit more but you don't want to add too much because you want um adding water to anything is going to water it down i'm going to just take my hand in here again and just kind of you know loosen the grapes up a little bit more inside of the water and the grape mixture and you just want to take a little bit like i said of the water till it's kind of floating a little bit because you don't want too much you don't you don't want too much water because it will water it down and this is wine we're trying to get lit okay that's it now once you have done that i'm gonna dry my hands off so once you have added your water your next step is to add your cheesecloth okay now your cheesecloth is going to kind of come in you know just regular packaging open it up here Okay, so this is what, you know, cheesecloth look like. It's like a white kind of cloth, <laughs> of course. That's kind of dumb, but no, it's, it's really just a white kind of mesh-ish cloth, okay? And what you're gonna do is, you're gonna, I might have to cut this, but you're gonna wanna take your cheesecloth. It comes already, of course, folded, so I'm just gonna leave it double. But what you're gonna do is you're gonna take your cheesecloth and pull it over your bucket. And you will need some very large rubber bands or string. I'm gonna use some rubber bands and just kind of seal it on there, okay? Take you about two or three. Make sure that the cloth isn't going anywhere and kind of seal it over the bucket. I'm gonna just fold it, you know, one time over each side just for GP. And, um, oh, that's the same. And add another layer of bands. Okay, so really you only need about one cheesecloth. And um, I just got my cheesecloth from, and I'm just tuck the excess, okay? But I got my cheesecloth from Walmart. And they sell cheesecloth almost anywhere. It's very common, especially if you bake. It's a good use for coverings and strainers and things like that so kind of want to make sure that 
your cheesecloth is all the way, you know, secured. I'm gonna add one more rubber band. The rubber band's not gonna hurt anything, you guys. Just making sure that it's secure, okay? After this, I have to let this sit for nine days. If you know anything about making wine, alcohol, or anything, if you don't, however, you have to allow for these things to sit, okay? The longer it sits, the better it's gonna be. So, our first step into the fermentation process is allowing for our, our holes inside grape and seeds, all of it, and juice, add it with the, a little bit of water to sit for nine days and begin the fermentation process, okay? Now, they recommend that you put this in a dark space so it has room to just ferment by itself, okay? So, whether it be a closet, a dark room that no one really goes in or a pantry have this somewhere in your house that you can have it or maybe your garage or basement or something but you want to just have it i would probably put in a room temperature control room but um have it somewhere you can just put in a dark space let it sit for nine days and we're going to come back to it in nine days however it will begin to probably smell very strongly in the house so Buy you some air freshener, guys. <laughs> That's all I can say because it is really going to probably kind of stink for a little bit. So, it's all a part of the process. All right. It has been nine days and the fermentation process should be completed. And I'm here at my house this time because that's where the wine has been fermenting. Um, and it's time to just really see what's going on and move on to the next step. So like I said before, it does kind of have like a strong smell. Honestly, I don't know if I'm just used to it or not. Um, I kept the wine in a um, dark closet in my off closet in a different bedroom. And so it's just been in there fermenting for the last nine days. So I'm not really sure if the smell is just so strong that I'm just used to it or it's not as bad as I thought it was gonna be. However, I am a little cautious before opening the crock back up and seeing and smelling what's inside, okay? So because of that, I am going to light a candle and it is from this candle company, amazing, amazing candle company called A Love That Burns. Let me just get the candle, okay? So this is the candle that I'm gonna be lighting today to try to cover up this wine smell that's gonna be going on while I'm making the video, okay? And so this is the candle, it's called Grand Risings. It smells so great. So this candle right here, it really just smells like fresh and clean, like home. Like it, it has like almost like a jasmine smell. Y'all, this candle smells so great and of course it's a black owned company, a black woman owned company, okay? Um, Adrian Carter, amazing candle maker. And just the quality of her candles, the company, all of that. She has, it comes with these matches, okay? And a strike on the bottom of your candle. So you don't have to worry about how am I gonna strike it, whatever the case may be. And it also, it also has instructions on the care of your candle. And even she comes up with these playlists for the candle as well. So I'm so excited to finally, oh, one strike. Yes. Amazing. Um, so excited to see how this burns and smells because it smells great already without it being burnt, okay? So I'm gonna have this burning throughout the video um, just to make sure that the wine scent doesn't just knock me out. So now it is time to actually get into the next step of our wine. If you remember, we put the wine in this nice thing here, okay? Covered it with some cheesecloth to keep the flies and whatnot out. Secured it with some rubber bands and we let it sit, okay? So we are at our next phase. We're just gonna begin to take this off Okay. Mm. Ah. Ooh. Ooh, y'all. Ooh, this looks disgusting. Ooh. 
do. Ew, and it stinks. Ew. Y'all, this really looks gross. Make sure you got to a bag because you're not about to drain these nasty grapes. Pulls out. I'm gonna show you guys what it looks like on the inside. Oh my God. Mind you, it has been sitting for the last nine days. Oh God. I'm a little nervous to start scooping something out. Um, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but here we go. Oh God. Ooh. Y'all. Oh my God. <laughs> no, seriously, y'all. Okay, let me get let me get serious. I'm gonna make sure you have another cotton crock or bucket, a, a metal strainer, and a ladle. Okay, all you're gonna do is just scoop the stuff out from here to here. Okay, and repeat the process till it's done. So just here, scoop this gunk out, put it in a strainer. Okay, and continue to do that till it is completed. All right, ooh. You might have some fruit flies or whatever because it's literally became fruit, so. And just allow for it to strain into the pot and the strainer. Just continue to scoop. And then I'm, I'm moving my um, pulls around in the strainer just to make sure it's, um, all drained out, okay? And so once you kind of have like your holes right here in the strainer and they're finished, kind of just maybe shake it a little bit more, okay? And you can, as you can see, the, ju uh, the wine starting, the juice, whatever is down there. And you just want to dispose of it. I have my garbage bag in the sink too. It's brand new, so just put it down there this way. You're not making a mess, y'all, because this is a lot of stuff. So you wanna try to make it as easy as possible on you, especially when you're doing it by yourself. So now I'm gonna just dump this into the trash bag, okay? Because that is done, we're done with that. I'm just gonna repeat, scoop, strain, dump until I'm finished, okay? All right, so I'm all done with the dumping process. I just rinsed this out. I just rinsed my strainer. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna restrain the wine from what I just dumped it into and back into this bucket just to make sure I haven't really missed any um, pulp, seeds, holes, whatever, okay? Just wanna make sure that you have a clean batch as possible, okay? So I'm gonna sit this in the sink now and then I'm gonna pour, start to pour this into the strainer. Okay, try to be careful. And guys, when I got to the end almost, um, I just kind of dumped the rest of the holes and all that instead of scooping it into the strainer and the bucket. I just kind of dumped it. And if you do that, you have to make sure you let it at least drain for at least a minute almost to make sure everything is out. And I'm gonna strain this one more time, but like I said, make sure, I don't know if you guys can kind of see that, but it's a lot of pulp right there, okay? So you don't want that. You want to kind of strain it, honestly, until you're pulp free. And I'm going to repeat that process until I'm kind of satisfied with how much um, pulp I'm getting off. So I just finished with my straining. I did it about three times, strained it, bucket to bucket. And now it's time to uh, go to the next step. So what you want to do is make sure you have a gallon so you can measure an empty gallon, clean gallon. I just bought a distilled water gallon, okay? And a funnel. So 
So what you're gonna do is you're gonna fill this up and pour it into the empty one because we have to have three pounds of sugar per one gallon, okay? And these are four pound bags. So three pounds of sugar per one gallon of juice, okay? So that's what we're about to do now. So I got my um, gallon, I got my funnel. I'm gonna do this in the sink just in case I have any spills. And I'm gonna take my bucket here and try to be as careful as possible, okay? Um, and I'm gonna pour this into the funnel. To fill the gallon up and make sure you guys are measuring this honestly would be easier with another person but since it's just me I gotta make sure I'm looking making sure not to overfill the funnel too much and also knowing where the juice is in the gallon bucket okay Just waste this time. See, guys, be careful. You need all that you have because. Oh, all right, now it's getting messy. Hold on. So, I just filled up the gallon. Now I'm going to just dump it into the bucket. Okay. I'm mad I just waste a little bit of this because I only really have about a gallon. So then you're going to want to take the rest and just repeat the process until you have used up all of the wine that you have. Not wine. Until you transfer all of the juice. I guess I have like a gallon and a fourth almost. Not really a half. So I'm going to dump this into the bucket again. Come on now. Alright. And I'm like rinsing as I go, y'all. Because I, I just cannot stand this smell. It's really not as bad now. I might be a little used to it, but truthfully, I cannot stand this smell. I'm not going to take some sugar. This is just like regular sugar. I bought the Domino sugar too. They're four pounds a piece. I don't know how much wine I thought I was gonna have, but I literally only have a gallon and a fourth. So I'm gonna use the whole packet. And this one is 30 calories and this one is 15. So I'm gonna use the 30 because maybe that means it's sweeter, okay? But um, yeah, so you wanna just take your sugar now. For however many gallons you had, you're gonna use three pounds. And since I had um, about a gallon and a fourth, um, <clears throat> I'm gonna just use the whole four pound bag, okay? I'm just dump it in there. <laughs> and you wanna stir it up. You wanna stir until that like crunchy sound is kinda gone. It means you kinda dissolve most of the sugar. <clears throat> now, <clears throat> Sugar doesn't really dissolve right away into cold liquids. We all know that. However, you kind of want to just make sure you have it all dissolved. Now, once you have done that, you are going to need some red wine yeast, okay? So this is red wine yeast. It was, it's what helped makes wine, wine. And so come in these little packets. And now it says that the envelope contains enough yeast to make up to five gallons of wine. For the best results, pour the yeast into a one fourth cup of water. You have to let it wait for about 20 minutes before you use it. So, I've already done that here. I put the yeast into this cup, let it sit in there. Um, I really don't know, it said it makes up to five. I only have one in the four, should I just use some of it? Or should I use all of it? I'm gonna use just probably some. Probably half. Okay. 
And I guess you stir it up. Probably. Mind you, y'all, this is my first time. Just kind of winging it. Okay. <laughs> All right. So now that you have done that, that's it for this step pretty much. What we're going to do now is cover this again, okay? I hope stirring it up was the right thing to do. I'm, I'm sure it didn't hurt it or whatever. Um, <laughs> But now what we're going to do is recover with our cheesecloth and our rubber bands. And we have to let it sit again for now 10 days minimum um, until the bubbling stops from the yeast. And if the bubbling has not stopped in 10 days, we have to give it five days. They say um, truly you can give it up to about 30, um, 30 to like 90 days, I think. But um, probably around 30 days, they say is the best time because the longer it ferments, the better it's going to be. So more than likely, I'll let mine sit for about 30 days, but I will do a... Uh, check up on it in about 10 days and then the five and then just let it sit for about 30 30 days I'm gonna just kind of shake this out um, right now because it's kind of no telling what might have been on it Just in case any dead fruit flies are on it or something again I'm gonna fold it over a few times like we did last time guys kind of fold it in here and here um, Is that how I did it? I think I did it like this first. Then I came over with another one. So put this one on. Then I think I came over like this. Yeah, that's what I did. Come over like that. Let's so like that. <laughs> and then you want to bring this over and pull these on the sides so that it sticks. And I'm just put out as many rubber bands as I had on the first time. I really only saw one fruit fly when I did this, so that's kind of good. Now I have to let this wait another 10 days up to 15 days and check it and then they truly say that about 30 days is um starting the best process of the wine making for the fermentation to let the yeast just sit and ferment so from because of that what i'm going to do is split this video up into two parts so this kind of completes the first part of this video um because the second part is nothing but just waiting okay and so as you know wine making Anything that you're truly making from like scratch, scratch, like bread, wine, um, alcohol, all that takes a minute. And so the wine truly won't be completed for a few months because it just has to sit. It has to sit and just, you know, ferment. So what I'm going to do is, I, like I said, split this up into two videos. And that second part with the um, catching the ferment and all that after 10 days is going to be the start of the second video okay so this does complete video one for how to make wine at home with your wild grapes the scuppernines and the muscadines and i am jay winnett the best friend that everyone deserves i hope you have enjoyed the video so far if you like this video so far make sure you stay tuned for part two i will be getting that out once the wine and the fermentation and all that has finished and taking place and then of course i will be tasting my wine whenever it's finished on a wine wednesday so this is going to be wine wednesday for this week the first part of how to make your own wine okay i am jay Winnett, the best friend that everyone deserves and i hope i will see you guys next time